Good morning, Faith family, and welcome to the Friday edition of the Daily Connection, a time when we get into the Word, and more importantly, the Word gets into us. And I know that word Friday really resonated with a lot of you because the work week is coming to a completion, the weekend is here upon us, and you're ready just to relax a little bit. And so we're coming to the conclusion of our focus on the purposed life. And it's been a great week. First Peter really, I hope, has challenged you. I know it's challenged me as I've gone through each day trying to get prepared to bring you a teaching from the text. And today we're bringing it all together. And when you think about purpose, uh, verse 9 of, of second, First Peter chapter 2 really screams purpose. For there Peter says, But you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Wow. Purpose is all in that. And first of all, in the sense of the word but, because if you remember verses 7 and 8 speak to the idea of the unbelievers and how Christ, it, what, how they consider Christ, who Christ is to them. He's a, he's a stumbling block, a stone of you know, offense. And yet Peter says, hey, but you, you are a chosen race. Uh, it's fascinating how Peter draws heavily from Old Testament imagery. And I'm thinking specifically about Exodus chapter 19. Uh, the people of Israel have left Egypt. God has delivered them, brought them through portions of the wilderness to Mount Sinai. He gets them there and through, Mo you know, through Moses, he speaks to the people in, in these terms. Listen, now if you'll carefully listen to me and keep my covenant, you will be my own possession out of all the peoples, although the whole earth is mine. So let me just stop right there. You hear that? You will be my own possession. Peter just said, you are a chosen race, a holy nation, people for his possession. We are the possession of God. We are the chosen race, uh, not chosen for our, our own abilities, not chosen for our own accomplishments, but simply by the grace of God, he called us out of darkness into the light. And so that's screaming Exodus 19. It's screaming the affection of God and, and God being proactive in that and purposing our life. He goes on in Exodus 19, And you will be my kingdom of priests and, and my holy nation. You hear the personal nature of that, the possessive nature of that? My kingdom of priests, my holy nation. And so now Peter, drawing off of that in the new covenant context in Christ, says that. He says, you are a royal priesthood. We are God's royal priesthood as a people, not as a certain ministry, but as a people. We are his royal priesthood. We are the ones who minister to and to him on a daily basis in worship and in time in the word. We are a holy nation. Uh, that obviously is the idea of being set apart from. Holy means to be set apart from the regular and the profane. We're a holy nation. We are to be set apart from. We are a people for his own possession. And then comes the purpose clause. So that. So that what? So that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Friends, there's our purpose. There's the commission. We are no longer to live as we were prior to being called out of darkness. We are a holy nation. We are set apart. We are a chosen race. And because we've been called out of darkness and God has purposed in us his light to shine that light, we are now to be the ones to project he says, the marvelous light. Man, and if we don't do it, who will? Who has the foundation? Who has the, the faith? Who has the belief system in the place to, con to not only contrast the darkness, but to come with such a marvelous, uh, a, a marvelous revelation of who Jesus is? That's us, the children of God. And that's our purpose. Again, I hope this week has been an inspiration for you, a reminder that our purpose is not just to survive, it's to thrive. It's not just to get along, it's to be along with our Lord and then through that time with Him, let His light shine through us that, that, that others may see His good works and glorify the Father. Man, that screams of purpose. I tell you, I'm looking forward to being together with you in corporate worship this coming Sunday. And I just want to put a word out there to some of our seniors who are still concerned about COVID. Don't put yourself in harm's way. But I also want to say this. Uh, our 930 service is a great option for you. If you're not currently going to a connect group, 930 would be a great opportunity for you because it's not nearly as crowded as our 8 o'clock and our 11 o'clock. You have an opportunity to, set, you know, to uh, get in a seat where you're not really close to others. And so, and, and everyone's faithful to wear their mask as they're moving around. 
um, and just a time to get back connected in corporate worship with one another. So I love you, Faith Family. Looking forward to celebrating with you this coming Sunday. But until we are together, live sent.